On this episode of the Friend to Friend podcast, Pastor Isaac Williams is jumping on to share his amazing story of growing up in the Amazon jungle of Brazil and how his upbringing inspired him to reach people all around the world. He and his amazing wife, Carol, and their incredible three daughters are living their life on a mission, not just to reach people, but to bring people's worlds together. They're all about building bridges and truly valuing people for who they are. So get ready, get your notebook. You're gonna enjoy this one. Welcome to the Friend to Friend podcast. We're so glad you're here. Today, we have one of my heroes and very great friends, Pastor Isaac Williams. How are you? (laughs) Good, good, good. Excited to be here. Awesome. Pastor Isaac is actually the missions pastor at Healing Place Church in Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. And you have a lot of experience as far as missions goes, traveling the world. I thought you were born in the jungle, but apparently you weren't. (laughs) I just found that out. That's Tarzan movie. (laughs) Tarzan. I got that confused. Sorry. (laughs) Thank you so much for jumping on today. Mm -hmm. I like here at Children's Club, you guys are legendary. Your family, you and Pastor Carol and your Mm -hmm. girls, y'all are just some of the most incredible people who have a heart for the world. For me personally, Mm -hmm. like you guys, I already loved Africa growing up. I already like grew up in all that but when i visited mozambique where you guys lived and you showed me around the community Mm. i just remember i felt something like i'd never felt before for the Mm. people and it was because of the way that you guys saw the way that you guys gave this perspective of like hope and seeing the the heart of god in people's Mm. eyes so i just honor you for that thank you for for that and i think it's not just africa but it's the way that y'all have set this just said this beautiful intention Mm -hmm. of how to value people so of course we wanted to have you on today (laughs) just to share that heart yeah Mm -hmm. awesome okay before we jump into all the fun stuff i want to let you give a snapshot of your story because clearly i don't have it right (laughs) i'm like the jungle right i don't know (laughs) (laughs) but before the first question i always like to ask is besides your spouse besides carol who is one of the best friends you've ever had and why? Mm. Uh, to me, that's kind of a uh, not an easy question. Yeah. Because like you were saying, I've lived uh, in several places. And uh, so I was born here in the U.S. Okay. But then I grew up in Brazil. So and I went to a boarding school in Brazil. Oh, so wow. So I had friends there from fourth grade on through high school. Yeah, I had friends that were some of my best friends, but nowadays uh, we don't communicate, right? You know, right. but they were Seasons. vital. They, correct. So then after that, moved back here to the states, and I had some really close friends. Yeah, while I was still here, but then I moved back to Brazil, so I had great friendships there as well. And then moving to Mozambique, developed some amazing, very close friendships there. Wow. In the time we were there. So that's cool. Saying that yeah. I have one best friend and now being back here in the States and it's developing tough. new new friendships. You know, so but in all of those places that I've lived, yes, I've had some really close friends. That's friends cool. that that would go to bat for me and that's so cool. And I would do the same. Yeah. Because you know, that's a vital part of of ministry in my opinion is having some really close friendships so in all of those different seasons in life i have i could name a bunch of them that would i would say yeah these were really close friends are there any common factors between them that you can point out or they all spoke portuguese Uh, (laughs) so i'm not a candidate for being a best friend clearly either they all they they all spoke portuguese or they all spoke uh, both okay so that is very high value on the friends list for pastor isaac (laughs) must speak portuguese okay got it that's so funny i do love that though how god I've I've not like moved all over the world my whole life, mm-hmm. but I have moved and I can look back and be like, that was a best friend for me in this season. Yeah. And mm-hmm. God knew exactly what I needed, who I needed. And he's and, so and faithful I'm sure vice, in that. vice versa too. Yeah. Those same yeah. people needed needed uh, you with them. Yeah. 
Yeah. Know, so. so I love how he does mm-hmm. that. He knows what you need in a season. That's yep. awesome. Yep. Okay. So for people who don't know, I'm one of them. <laughs> Tell us, I know hearsay, like your family is legendary. You guys have. It's hearsay. <laughs> no, sorry. The, the, the facts are hearsay for me. But the... <laughs> I didn't mean that. No, no, no. Not hearsay. The hearsay is the jungle part. The truth is you guys are legendary. Your family, you have generational mm-hmm. like callings to reach people. Missions is in your blood. Mm-hmm. Um, but like obviously the facts, like what, how did you grow up? You were born here. Mm-hmm. What was that upbringing like that led you to the life that you have now? Yeah, so my, uh, my grandparents my, mm-hmm. on my dad's side are from here. From okay. around here, they were all over the states, but they okay. most of them moved here. So well, the, Cajun. the Gonzales area, Ascension uh, Oh yeah, 431. <laughs> there is uh, a lot of relatives okay. on that side by the Malco. <laughs> yeah, by the Malco. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, so on my parents' side, uh, my grandparents were missionaries to the Amazon area and northern part of Brazil, okay. in northeastern part of Brazil. How did they pick Brazil? I'm not sure. Well, I do know that they were one of the first missionaries with New Tribes Missions. Okay. And uh, so they went to Brazil uh, wow. with them. They were one of the first missionaries to go down with New Tribes. Cool. And then my dad, uh, you know, to shorten the story, my so all of my dad, my dad's family grew up in Brazil. Most of them moved back here to the States uh, when they were older. And my grandmother was buried in Brazil. Wow. But then... Uh, uh, when my dad stayed and was doing life and, and, and things in Brazil and then met my mom, who's Brazilian. Cool. And then uh, they got married and then my three older siblings were born in Brazil. But then I was born here in the States along with my youngest brother. So we're one of, I'm one of five. Okay. And uh, so I'm half Brazilian, half American, That's I so guess cool. you could say. And, but I, I was just born here in the States at a very young age. I was two, if I'm not mistaken, that uh, my parents moved back to Brazil okay. with full-time missions. So wow. before that, it was not just, they were just living as, my dad living as American in Brazil. But then when, after I, myself and my youngest brother were born, then we moved back to Brazil as full-time missionaries with uh, Household of Faith. Okay, that's so was, cool. Uh, yeah, so because our family was closer to that area. Yeah. You know, so growing up in the mission field and then... Uh, what was that like, though? Like, as a kid, mm-hmm. growing up in the jungle, like, I've heard stories of, like, y'all in the Amazon River and the boats. And yeah. So, it was, like, so crazy. So it was actually right in, smack in the middle of the Amazon jungle. Dude. Where there was this road that connected two cities and uh we started doing ministry my dad planted a church out there in the middle of nowhere on the river this no this was on this uh, not on the river itself okay but it's in uh, amazon jungle area that on this road that sometimes was actually closed because it was just the amazon rains a lot so it destroys the road and then oh my gosh uh, sometimes you can only get to this region by boat and then Go down the Amazon, go up another river, oh and then gosh. get there. So, no electricity. We had a generator at times, just okay. mostly at night. Whoa! And, uh, and then we had refrigerator stuff, but they were run by propane. Okay. It's not too common to. See, so like to lived hear off about. the grid, pretty much. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We were, <laughs> so and we planted. We had cows. We had we planted corn. We planted different fruits and vegetables and everything else. So it was sort of off grid. Wow. But not on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, that was our growing up years. That's and then so we slowly moved to a different city that was close by. Okay. And uh, helped plant a church there as well. Wow. And then, but then after that, I went to a boarding school. It was a New Tribes Missions uh, boarding school. Because okay. it was either that or uh, or homeschool, which I did for a little bit. <laughs> and But then we ran out of material. Okay. And then, I was like, you didn't like homeschool? <clears throat> well, I did. I, <laughs> I enjoyed it. But then because we only stayed... Uh, we, we would stay in Brazil for four years and then go back, come okay. back here for a year and then go to for four years. The, the okay, whole system. Like a sabbatical kind Correct. of deal. Okay. Correct. So then uh, we ran out of homeschool supply, but then to be able to come, you can't just back then or you don't DHL stuff. You I know? See. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, the back and forth. And then I went to Brazilian school for a little bit. Okay. But then 
So I came to the States without learning English, went back to Brazil, not knowing Portuguese, oh, came boy, back here. That's hard. So then I got held back because I didn't know the Shoot. language, but then started going to uh, Brazilian school and I was forgetting the English Okay. until finally in fourth grade, uh, I went to the boarding school. Wow. So wow. I would see my parents uh, twice a year oh, that's for hard. summer and Christmas vacation. You know, so uh, it was even harder on my parents because here we are. Mm -hmm. They were empty nesters uh, at a very yeah, early wow. stage because at one point all five of us weren't at the were at oh, the boarding school. That's gotta be tough. Oh yeah, it was, uh, it was real tough, especially on my mom. But at yeah. the same time, it's one of those things that if it wasn't for going to that boarding school, I probably wouldn't be here talking to you today. That's what I was gonna ask, like. Mm -hmm you grew up in this ministry lifestyle like didn't know i'm the same way like i didn't know i didn't live in the jungle but <laughs> like i didn't know any different yeah. and for me i never wanted anything different mm -hmm. like i this is what you do like you oh, love yeah. people and you but mm -hmm. for you when did you realize like hey this is not just my parents yeah life like this is what i want mm -hmm. so i i mean i love i, I don't regret any of my childhood you yeah know, i loved it being it out in the jungle so cool. it, it was you know, we had we have some great stories and they were exciting, yeah. exciting times. But every time we'd come back to the States, I, I, for some reason, I understood that we were being part of something bigger than wow. than ourselves, you know. But then it's not to say that it's easy. Mm -hmm. It's not. Yeah. You know, looking back now and then now with with kids, I'm getting ahead of here a little bit. But now with with having my own kids, I I I see that the the, the cost wow. of of being on mission field it's yeah. not a it's not a low price man and uh, you 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 know yeah. what i'm talking about as well but uh being in ministry in general mm -hmm. is already not easy but uh living living on the mission field is a different ball game yeah it's not to say that i'm that we're more special than anybody else it's the God gives us a grace for it that's true but it's still a high price to pay yeah. but the grace balances it out it zeroes it out you know That's if good. that makes any sense that does math make sense. but uh so Man. where was i going with that well i do <laughs> let's go ahead and jump into that because i want to ask i want to ask about you and carol's love story too but <laughs> the fact that you you guys moved to mozambique mm -hmm. Well, tell me that you guys got, I remember like before we all even were married and then all of a sudden you're all married and gone. Yeah. Like yeah. what happened? And now we'll jump into the kids mm -hmm. in a second, but tell me how y'all got to Africa. Yeah. So I, I remember now where I was going, but oh, okay. it, it goes okay. with that. Cool. I knew I was going to be a missionary when I was around 13. Mm. I went to a missions conference okay. with the mission organization that we were connected with okay. there and uh, a missionary from Mexico came and he was the speaker and I had a, uh, for lack of a better term, a Holy Ghost moment that I knew was like, oh, I'm going to be a missionary. Wow. You know, so uh, where? I always thought it was going to be Brazil. Makes because sense. that's all I knew. Yeah. You know, so then fast forward that to, uh, came back to the States after high school and uh, started working here, worked in ministry here. I worked very little with a secular job, I guess you could say. Okay. And then went back into ministry and working with ministry here at Healing Place and volunteering and full-time ministry as well. Went back to Brazil as a missionary. Okay. But then, so that's the thing. I didn't know when I was going to be a missionary, yeah. but I knew. Yeah. And then in my quiet time one morning, it's like, it's time to go. And uh, so I did. Oh, and, my gosh. Uh, uh, I had already been talking with Carol because I've known her since I was around 13. Oh, so, interesting. Yeah. So, but all that was together. we just knew each other because okay. I was always at the boarding school. So I would only I only saw her once or twice uh, through after those years. Okay. Because it was a di completely different city. Gotcha. So if I was at the boarding Whoa. school, so I even in the Amazon, I met her one time okay. before Man. we started talking, talking, and then I met her here again in the what are here the in the odds? states. But she was at ORU Whoa. when I was already here back okay. in the States. So cool. very little interaction before we we started talking. And, talking. And then, <laughs> so we, we, we dated and got engaged and got married in 11 months. I knew it was fast. Yeah. I was like, whoa, yeah. she is so amazing. Oh, yeah. Like one of the mm -hmm. most gracious and kind people oh, yeah. ever, sure. ever, ever. 
Okay. Sure. So then how did y'all choose to go to Africa so, so fast? But yeah, so it wasn't really us choosing to go to Africa. So back in the day, <laughs> they made us go <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't know about Africa much, really. And Google didn't know much about Africa. Google back then didn't either. know much. Yet. Oh no, Google was very and it's <laughs> very vintage days. Very okay. still dial up. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> uh, but. Uh, so I was doing ministry. I was youth pastoring in Brazil. I was helping my parents with the church plants out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. That they had they had okay. four different church plants in the middle of nowhere in the Amazon. Okay. Uh, that you can only get to by boat sort of thing. Wow. Or if you had a helicopter, but otherwise. And we didn't have a helicopter. <laughs> <Darn>. <laughs> so uh, I was, you know, I was, I mean, full-time ministry doing a thing and, and, uh, uh, Back then, the missions pastor called, and well, they sent an email said, "Hey, we're Pastor Dino's thinking of uh, starting a church in Mozambique, and wow. uh, do you know anybody that can uh, that would be through it?" Now, I was just working at the church there, okay. and uh, I just translated the email and gave it to the pastor that speaks Portuguese, right? Because Portuguese yes. is the common language in, in Brazil. Okay. And in Mozambique. And, which is very interesting. Most people probably don't know that. Correct. Mozambique, yeah. Mozambique speaks Portuguese. Yes. Okay. So then I just translated the email in because I thought I was going to be a missionary in, in Brazil. You know? It's not for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then a few weeks later, uh, we had a meeting set up oh with the missions pastor of the day of then. I've been through a few mission pastors. <laughs> and uh, and they, he said, hey, are you sitting down? And as soon as he said sitting down. Oh, God. Mozambique came to my mind. No way. And that's when he proposed, he proposed the idea of a, would you consider going to Mozambique to be oh my gosh. the the pastor of the campus? Not just that. First international campus that he only place ever planted. That's true. Yes. Whoa. So no pressure. Big deal. Big deal. <laughs> and Mozambique is like rural. Oh, yeah. Like rural. Yeah. Well, even back then, it, it still is, but yeah. it, it was one of the poorest countries in the world. Yeah. And like I said, Google didn't know much about right. uh, Mozambique. It's a little different than the mm -hmm. jungle. And, yeah, quite different. <laughs> the only advantage I had was the Portuguese, Language. and because of the Portuguese, some of the culture was very similar because okay. of Portugal connection okay. with Makes Brazil sense. and so forth. Makes sense. You know, but uh, I told them, hey, uh, I'll talk to my girlfriend about it because we weren't engaged or anything. Oh, y'all weren't we were, even, oh. And it was a long-distance relationship. Oh, boy. So, because Carol's she was amazing. <laughs> I'm like, this man's crazy, okay. <laughs> well, she was more excited than I was. <laughs> really? Which I... I, I I was like, I don't know Mozambique. Whoa. I've never planted a church on my own. I've helped plant churches. Uh -huh. I've never pastored a church on my own. Dude. I've been youth pastoring, you know. But uh, And then to go to a country that nobody had ever been, that I had never been to, you know. Wow. And then. Uh, and she's all for it. So I called her as soon as I got off the phone. I called her and she got all excited about it. So I was like, what to propose is going to be easy, isn't it? <laughs> I guess we're getting married. Then. Yeah, that's the next step. <laughs> you can't come unless you say yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> wow. So we, so that was around January of 2006 okay. that I got that phone call. And we got married in July. And then we moved here to the States in September. And then moved to Africa in January of 2007. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah. Whirlwind. And it was just the two of us. We moved with seven suitcases and a guitar. <laughs> An so acoustic cool. guitar. Oh, my and, gosh. Uh, so we well, we first landed in, in, in Swaziland, which is now Eswatini. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then uh, we stayed there for a few months. But then we landed in January. Okay. And our, our uh, grand opening service was in April. Of the same year, dude. So That's very fast, short, fast yes. track. Yes, fast and track. while uh, running the feeding programs, the, the yeah, care points. Yeah, you guys had a care point. Yeah. Well, or we were starting. Multiple. We had we were starting a second one at the same time. Okay. Yeah. 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 In a city four hours north of where we were. Okay. So a lot. A lot of road trips. <laughs> Man, and then you guys had Elena. Two, How? two years later. Okay, so it wasn't like super. No. I mean, I felt no. like it was fast, but mm -hmm. I mean, I guess it kind of was. Yeah. There's a lot going mm -hmm. on. 
Wow. Yeah, Tell a me a little bit about once quickly. you got to Mozambique, because I, I don't remember what year I came to visit, mm-hmm. but like I just remember riding around with you guys in the car and you were just like pointing out different people's stories. You're also mm-hmm. talking about just like very specific needs and mm-hmm. the hope behind it. And I just love, like I said earlier, the way that you guys communicated. It wasn't like... Um, hopeless or anything like that it was just like this is what's going on and here's opportunities and my dad and i were talking before this interview just like preparing Mm -hmm. and he pointed out that something that you are known for and your family is known for is just you guys build bridges between Mm -hmm. people you bring people's worlds together you're not like shaming anybody for Mm -hmm. being like oh you're american you don't know you're clueless Mm -hmm. i never felt that way i felt invited into not this you should but Mm. like don't you see the beauty in it like can't you feel Mm. and i did it was like this enchanting Mm. i hate like it's not enchanting for me it was like it it really was like how just talk to me about that like your Mm. love for humanity especially when it started like flourishing Mm. with in mozambique well it's awesome to hear that because i mean you know because i think so carol and i always had from the very beginning we had this uh, it, it's it's very easy, especially with mission field stuff, especially yeah. Africa. Mm-hmm. Uh, I call it uh, calamity tourism. Yes, that it's yeah. very easy to show everybody's uh, miseries. Yeah, and to try to tug at people's emotions. But I'll never forget. I don't to this day. I can't remember, and I can't find anymore a message that I was listening to or watching. I can't remember, but. I never forget this one phrase that the the preacher said. He said, uh, "Help people not because they need help, mm-hmm. but because you love them." And that has so been I, I've been operating with that this whole all these years, twenty plus years in ministry, wow. because so if, needs are always going to be there, Tori. So yeah. if I just pursue people because of their needs, or I'm trying to fulfill a need all the time. I'm end up loving the needs Ooh. more than the people. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so wow. I'll, I'll, I'll be good. showing, I'll only be seeing people's calamity, people's misery, people's difficulties, because I'm, that's what I'm looking for yeah. to fulfill those needs. But if, if I put it in my heart, no, these are, these are people that I love. And mm-hmm. because I love them and I see their need, then I'll, I'll be helping them in their need. And so to and that's why I think when 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 you were saying about what I was showing mm-hmm. is because when I w- to concentrate on on the person, yeah. uh, the needs are always going to be there. Right. But if, if you look at the people and you love on on people, uh, I always encourage people, don't don't be taking a bunch of pictures of calamity. Mm. Take pictures of people's joy. Record people's joy. Record, record life transformation. Wow. You know, yeah. and that's and uh, I I think that's uh, that's helps with longevity, because man needs can be overwhelming. You know, so yeah. needs are yeah. going to be there all the time. Jesus said, "The poor you'll always have with you." Mm-hmm. You know, but uh, it's it's concentrated on loving people, I love that. and then that's why I can look at people's lives like look where they were look where they are now and and you can see that track record it's not hard to find it's it's not it's hard to find sometimes i mean because it's it's sometimes it's slow depending on the person that the life changes slow but then you look back at a you you zoom back a little bit and you can see wow look what god has been doing in people's lives yeah you know so that way when you so then when people come like you and and many 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 teams we can cast a vision of look what God is doing. And that's my second thing that I always tell people in, in uh, one of my life goals is that I'm never going to advertise for the devil. Hmm. I'm never going to advertise for the devil. So if I have a choice, I'll, I'll, I'll advertise life transformation. Okay. I will celebrate the wins. I will, I mean, uh, because it's it's easy to try to, look at situations like i said earlier about look at the misery look at all these problems look at all these things Mm -hmm. it's like no look at what god is doing 
It, it, Satan, we can see what he's doing all over the world. Yeah. You know, but that's right. We and we tend to look at that more mm -hmm. instead of look, hey, true. look at what God's doing. Yeah. Look at the smile. And we've seen it uh, in people's lives and some of the uh, some of our our church members there. I mean, their yeah. facial expressions, their their demeanor has changed because they're free. That's amazing. You know, their joy, even if their material world has not been resolved, mm -hmm. there's joy because they have peace wow. and forgiveness and transformation. You know, so good. So I think that's where where we strive. We've always. Uh, attempted to come at life and ministry from that angle and it's you so know? evident it's mm -hmm. so evident just i can go back to that trip and being at the church and mm -hmm. i remember i like more than any other mission trips like mm -hmm. the ones visiting mozambique there are kids that i still remember their names like oh, that's awesome. there's specific memories that i have because the way that you guys were leading was so much about just fall in love with their mm -hmm. stories, just fall in love with people. And even just, I remember admiring y'all, like y'all are a family out here doing this. Like you mm -hmm. have some people helping, but it's really you guys. And for me, I would have just been like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> I, how am I going to do this? How is mm -hmm. this going to happen? But you, like you said, you led with people first. Like this mm -hmm. is a person with a name. This is not, yeah. they're not labeled. There was no mm -hmm. this or that. It was just, a sincere love for people mm -hmm. and that's what allowed them to grow in the yep. way that God wanted them to. Mm -hmm. You weren't putting them through these steps or this funnel. It was just like, what is God's design for you? And mm -hmm. let's unlock that. Yep. So that's incredible. Yeah. Do you have any specific, like for me, I remember Abraham was like one oh, of the yeah. famous little yeah. kids. He was so <laughs> cute. But Isabel is the one that I remember <laughs> she you guys, the I think smile. she, oh gosh, her yeah. smile, she had dimples, yeah. mm -hmm. but her grandmother, I think was like the witch doctor of the community. Yes. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I can't remember. I think they moved the way I put you on the spot. No, 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 no. But she's the uh, one I, I, like, I right. Mean, it's amazing. Yeah. You remember her. Oh, I can't forget her. If I'm not mistaken, Carol would know more about her than, than I would. Yeah. But, uh, I, either she moved the way and it's been what, uh, 17 years it's been now a while. She's grown. so if you came in 09 or 08 or so if way back then yeah you know so Ebrahim I still see him every once in a while yeah but uh that's awesome you know people growing up some of those kids are are grown adults now it's so amazing you know, but uh, some are still around some have moved away mm -hmm. but we still when they come to visit they still remember they still uh, you just never know. Yeah, you just you never, never know. know where their stories mm -hmm. go in, and we don't always get the luxury of knowing yeah. like Correct. where. But you still are mm -hmm. faithful to plant those. So even that seeds. whole family, the witch yeah. doctor family, they have moved away. Yeah, you know, and yeah. uh, some of them are still around, but not. Uh, yeah, they come back and forth and things like that. I remember visiting. Like I met her a few times, and I remember mm -hmm. being able to just see a little bit of a difference. Like yep. imagine being a kid mm -hmm. who's growing up with a grandmother who's the local witch doctor like yep. that's terrifying mm -hmm. but i just remember even with years gaps being able to see transformation in her mm -hmm. her spirit and yep. the hope that like you guys were clearly investing in her mm -hmm. so i just i just imagine like so many different yeah. moments that you guys in your investment really made it you know, you'll mm -hmm. never know well there's a there's a, another girl there uh that her her mom was a, is a witch doctor or is or was because no Shoot. i'm sorry so she's slowly getting out of that life really because there's a lot of inner uh, uh uh monetary temptation okay. with being a witch doctor okay it's not necessarily just the spiritual power that you get mm. it's the monetary influence that you get it's a lot of money wow you know because you got to charge for the services yeah so true. then it's a good income Whoa. because a lot of people believe in it so Sometimes they'd rather go to a witch doctor than to go to a hospital and things like that. So anyway, so uh, this girl stuff. that's, that's, uh, she helps at the church. She volunteers at the church. She's active in the church. She was actually the drummer for her mom. Oh my. So the drummer is the one that If you've ever been to Africa, you can hear it like oh, yeah. in the distance. Like, Invoking <gasps> the spirits. Right. Oh, so she was a drummer. Yeah. And she started coming to church. Oh my and gosh. And and that started to come into church, uh, she realized, so she was still coming to church and playing the drum. 
Okay. But then as she's growing in her relationship with Christ, she realizes, yeah, that's not good. Whoa. So she was, she told her mom she can't do it anymore. Oh my gosh. So uh, fast forward a bunch. Now they're now doing every once in a while, they do a small group at the mom's house. No kidding. <laughs> so this daughter stood up to her mom, a witch doctor, and now she's bringing her her family to Christ because of that uh, because of that relationship that's because incredible. of the church being there as well. Oh my gosh, you know? mm-hmm. that's radical. We've also had stories of uh, one of our he's our youth pastor now, and uh, he his dad like when they face bad luck and everything when the family's going through a mess they go to witch doctor the witch doctor says hey you gotta. Uh, you got to do this ceremony at such and such a place, but it has to be the whole family. So the, he's coming to church. He oh got boy. saved and he's coming to church and he says, no, I'm not going to do that. Well, his dad says, well, you got 24 hours to leave the house. So he gets kicked out of his house because he didn't want to do this, this ceremony. Whoa. And, uh, so there's a price to pay for that as well. So one one family, she's mm-hmm. reaching her family to Christ. This other one that stood up for, for Christ gets kicked out of his home. But then God starts blessing him. God gave him a house because the team came and wanted to bless oh, him with a wow. house. He got That's his so cool. wedding paid for. What? Uh, no no expenses for his wedding. His Her dress, a, mission, a girl went on the mission trip, took her wedding dress from here, and it fit her perfectly there. Yeah. So he gets, he loses everything. As, as he, he gets kicked out of a house. God okay. gives him his own house, his own property, wow. his own family with a wedding fully paid for. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Lose your so life then, to find it. Correct. Gee and whiz. then on top of that, uh, and, and on top of that, the money that somebody had given to build him a house, he comes around and tells me, hey, I want to tithe off of that money. No way. He tithes for that money. Somebody else gives him a wedding gift, the same amount no. that he had tithed. <laughs> That's so cool. So God works in mysterious ways. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, that's mm-hmm. so radical. Mm-hmm. Like That's just the most exciting so, thing, to be mm-hmm. able to see God doing that. Yeah. And people like grasping who he is in yeah. their lives. Mm-hmm. And all wow. it took, you know, going back to your original question, all it took is Carol and I being available to hmm. go to a place that we didn't know much about. Deep. At all. Wow. You know? Just because they spoke the language. Yeah. And that goes back to your first question. Yeah. Like, my friends all speak Portuguese. <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> That's all that matters. Not that I was seeking their Portuguese, but yeah. <laughs> but it's just, that how God does it. It's yeah. a sign. Yeah. Okay, I do want to ask, mm-hmm. for me, having my family bring me up in ministry missions all those things people are always like how how was that growing up like was that hard i'm like no Mm -hmm. this was Mm -hmm. just like they never forced me they just invited me along and they were like we're gonna do this together like cool this is who we are and you grew Mm -hmm. up that way but then watching you guys raise your girls like visiting y'all's home Mm -hmm. and the girls are all up like they're in their little dresses and we're all up at church together doing vbs's whatever How, like, what are some of the things, I just am imagining listeners, especially me, like I have a son who's five and I Mm -hmm. also want to be able to invite him into that stuff. He's, my particular son is cuckoo. He's crazy. He's like, (laughs) not like a bring along kind of guy, Mm -hmm. but we're working on that. But just how do you craft a lifestyle as a family? Like we are going to reach people together because so many times I'm going to stop, but so many times you'll see like the parents or the father they're sold out for evangelism or ministry or mm-hmm. whatever, but the family is kind of like, and it's fine. Like they're doing their thing too, but they're not part of yeah. that. Mm-hmm. So it's so special mm-hmm. to see you guys. Like how, how did you? I think so. All, all my three girls were born in, in South Africa, a neighboring yeah. country to Mozambique there. But, uh, so they grew up in Mozambique. Okay. So that was the only environment they knew other than coming here to the States for two, three months at a time and then going back. Yeah. We would be 18 months there and then come back for about two months here and then 18 months on and off. Wow. So, but uh, I think there's two ways and you've mentioned them both. There's two ways of, of doing ministry and how do you 
involve the kids. Mm -hmm. So you can have the kids accompany you as you do ministry, Mm -hmm. or you can cast vision to the kids that they are part of that ministry. So I I think for Carol and I, we always from from the start, like we're going to we're going to raise our kids as it's not our it's not Carol and I calling. And even Mm -hmm. even uh, I'll even go further. It's not Isaac's calling and Carol is just tagging along. Yeah, that's it was I wouldn't have gone if Carol wasn't in on it. I don't want uh, she if if she's a companion, then Mm -hmm. it's we're in this together. I think it it, it 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 gets complicated if the either spouse spouse is just tagging along mm-hmm. it, for longevity and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, for but sure. uh, but then and then there's another way of and I've seen both both aspects of it on the mission field is uh, some kids just tag along with their parents. Mm-hmm. So the, but then it creates this this division. And that's when you notice that our girls, we would even stop homeschooling on times where teams are there because we wanted our girls to be a part of that. To our, so even cool. as they were getting older, they were translating for teams. They were, oh my gosh. They were teaching and uh, translating for the, 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 the so VBSs cool. and everything else and helping with teams, which is a major help for us. You know, but they had this sense of belonging mm-hmm. to where they're all part of the mission. Man. And even us moving back now, I've, I'm always expressing to my girls, we're not off the mission field. Oh wow! And 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 yeah. uh, we're off the mission field, but we're not off from our mission. Our calling back here to the states is their calling also. Wow! So wherever they may be, if it's in youth, if it's at school, if wh- whatever environment they're in, and you know my my middle child, she's always inviting people from her school to come to church and i even have to pick them up at times <laughs> <laughs> you're like no 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 slow down your mission needs to take a yeah it's like i gotta get a better, bigger car <laughs> start oh, getting the church sweet. bus that's yeah. esther right that's esther, yeah. oh i remember when she was so little so, she's yeah. always so friendly mm. and now they're wow. 15 14 and 7 that's so insane. time flies oh my gosh i'm so old that's incredible so so yeah i've always uh, we've always tried to yeah. include our girls in ministry you know that they're part of the ministry so they've been involved with children's church they've been involved to everything so and uh, I'm not saying that every family does that or mm-hmm. if there's a right and wrong way. I've seen both aspects to it, but yeah. it, I think it makes it harder if we, if the kids are just side uh, as spectators mm-hmm. of their parents doing something. Yeah. And uh, it as, takes a lot to remember mm-hmm. to include. Yes. It, it's It's got to be proactive. Yeah. That's for sure. Especially when you're like someone who... For me, I'm mm-hmm. I'm on a mission. Yep. Like I gotta accomplish. I, I love people, but I got something to do. Yeah. It's yeah. so hard to like mm-hmm. pause a second and like explain and mm-hmm. paint the picture. Yeah. So that's so good. And once the kids catch the vision, they they know their role. Mm, you know, that's they're not. But they're not trying to be somebody they're not. Yeah. They're but they understand. see the importance of the mission. It's so good. And that way, they don't feel obligated. Yeah. You know, now they're in their teen years, so this is a different, <laughs> <laughs> different season. But uh, we'll oh, see how that goes. <laughs> good luck. Yeah. Good luck. Oh, that's so good. Okay. What would you say is one of the biggest, maybe, challenges that you guys as a family, you don't have to get like super personal, but like as a family, what are some of the biggest challenges living this lifestyle mm-hmm. that you guys have overcome? Mm hmm. I know it's kind of broad, but oh, man. I just feel like you guys are so full of faith and mm-hmm. so just sold out. And I don't know. So I, I think now with, with having kids, that's probably the, the hardest part. Uh, <laughs> not kids. not the raising kids <laughs> part, because that's hard for, for, for anybody. Boy, but, ain't it? Yeah. But then... Uh, so if, if people and people sometimes ask me, what's the hardest part about being a missionary? Mm-hmm. You know, right now I'm not a, a missionary. I'm a missions pastor. To but Louisiana, you are. We need to sure. too. <laughs> yeah. Well, finding that out. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe more than yeah. SMB. Forget the witch doctors. <laughs> like if you ask me right now, if I had a choice between uh, take out God's will and, and everything else, we know we're supposed to be here right now. 
but I find it easier to be in Mozambique, really? even though it's one of the hardest places to live. Really? Because I did 15 years there. I so it's familiar. Oh, yes. Okay. okay. And uh, I have more years living in Mozambique than living here in the States. Dude. You know? That's so nuts. I know how to get around to st- in, in Mozambique more than I know them how to get around Them potholes, though. <laughs> well, yeah, I know so how to get bad. around the potholes. I'm hitting them all here because I don't know where they are. <laughs> <laughs> the roads are still better here, by the way. Oh, barely. Bro. <laughs> and traffic is way better here. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're saying that. <laughs> but uh, so I think the hardest part of of the ministry is mm-hmm. the high sacrifice of being away from family. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, that and it's a sacrifice on both sides of the family for us being there being away from family but also you know if you consider what about the family that has this sacrifice that we're not that they're here yeah. that stayed mm, that's no. tough so that's a really high price to pay for example my parents are there right now in mozambique in mozambique as, as missionaries as missionaries now th- think about this oh gosh uh they my girls were the ones that they were grandparents to the most because oh, they grew up there. Wow. So the other grandkids, and they love them all equally, except they love mine more. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, no edit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I laugh at you. So <laughs> but uh, so all the other grandkids, they would see them, they, they see them every 18 months or so. Okay. So they were really close. But my girls, they see them, they would see them all the time. Man. And then all of a sudden, uh, I uproot my whole family and bring them here to the States. And my parents are there without their granddaughters. Left them high and dry. Left them high and dry. <laughs> so imagine how I, yeah, and Carol and I heavy. feel about that. And then them over there as well. That's so that's, uh, mm-hmm. that's hard to navigate. Yeah. You know, and then transitions. Uh, transitioning to the mission field was... It was just Carol and I, mm-hmm. and we were just newlyweds. newlyweds. So it's not like we had baggage in terms of life before marriage, uh, before moving there. We only had six months of marriage <laughs> <laughs> before moving there. So, uh, but then moving, uh, moving the girls from yeah from there to here. Uh, that's Big a tough change. one, and but then coming back and forth every eighteen months. I mean, to to hear my one of my daughters just sobbing that she didn't want to move back here, oh, man. and that's because so her whole tall. life was there, that's you so know. Hard. So that uh, yeah. it, it makes you really think: Did you really hear from this God, the Lord, that you're leading your kids, your family through pain? Whoa, and. My parents, I'm leading them through, I led them through pain. I took away their grandkids. <laughs> you know? Gosh, that's heavy. So, yeah. it, so those transitions, and it, 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 uh, it is painful. Mm-hmm. It is painful. Yeah. You know, so then, but it's worth it because we're doing it for our Savior. Wow. So, when it, it, I know it sounds cliche-ish, but I, I, it's not cliche to me. Because it's I'm real. living it, living it's real. It. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm I'm not doing it out of selfish ambition. Whoa! Because if I was doing it out of selfish ambition, I would have stayed. Right. I, I, it was comfortable. Yeah. Even though it's a hard country, it's hard to understand. But yeah. it was life. Yeah. You know, is life easier physically here? Sure. Yeah. But to get uprooted, and will things get easier on this side? Oh yeah, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Transitions are never easy. Right. But. Uh, Man, and, and you're so, teaching your girls like to value God's mm-hmm. voice over comfort. Right, that's and so it, hard. And you know, when one of the nights that one of my girls was just sobbing about moving back, and she didn't want to, and uh, we prayed for with her. Mm-hmm. And the next day, she says, "Okay, I'm good now." No way. Yeah, because uh, God spoke to me about <gasps> peace, and <laughs> that would then make it easier. Yeah, she still cried about it, but she knew that. God was telling her it's okay. That's so good that God yeah. like takes care. He's like, I, oh yeah, it's not on you mm-hmm. to make this all okay. I'm yeah. gonna be part of it mm-hmm. and building their faith. And with that's it. and that's been the that's the, the part too about God's grace. Mm-hmm. So every time we'd come back after 18 months being there, mm-hmm. we'd stay here for about 
two months. Okay. And it was heart wrenching for me because you asked mm-hmm. them in the beginning of those two months because they're excited. They got their cousins, their sure. their friends' church, and everything's new and fresh and different. You know, less potholes and <laughs> <laughs> and all of that stuff and donuts. And donuts. But uh, <laughs> so they would come back for that. But if you asked them in the beginning of that two months, mm-hmm. then anything about Mozambique, they didn't even want to talk about it. Okay. But it was like clockwork every time. Wow. About two weeks before going back, it, we I would Carol and I would start praying about it. It's like God changed their heart. They would come to us. It's time to go. Oh wow! Back to Mozambique. So God's grace Prepare. always was preparing our hearts mm-hmm. in whatever transition, so even though they were hard. Mm-hmm. You know, to ask you that question, so to answer that good. question about family and transitions and things like that. You know, wow. so God's grace always, and it taught me to never go without God's grace. <laughs> Man, that is incredible. So, it's like you don't mm, want it no other way. There's yeah. no better place than to be in wherever he's telling you oh, to be. Oh, it's terrifying without it. I can Yeah, yeah that's nuts. Yeah. I love it. Mm. Man, you guys are so inspiring. One of my favorite questions to ask is when we interview a hero, Mm -hmm. what is like inspiring you? Give us some homework. Should we read something? Is there a fresh book or a podcast that you're enjoying (laughs) or what, what's fresh on your docket? I I think for, for me, uh, if I were to, if I were to say read this or that and the other, uh, can't be the Bible. We know it can't be the Bible. (laughs) No, we we know the Bible. Okay. That's a given. Yeah. But the, 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 I think reading the Bible in a different light, I I guess Mm, that would be me. Fresh eyes, fresh eyes, because how do you do that? Because our, so our tendencies that I'm finding more and more nowadays is reading the Bible for what it has for me. Mm -hmm. And if we start reading the Bible for, Hey, what's God trying to say? Mm. Just and stop it right there. Mm. Not what's God trying to say to me. That's it's, good. Because uh, otherwise, it turns into an, an, a, a, uh, an egocentric and anthropocentric mm-hmm. uh, ideology mm-hmm. that it's always about what is God telling me. It's always about me wow. instead of what's God saying, That's good. and then you follow that. That's very good. You know. Yeah. So and 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 follow that. And and go with that. I love that so much. And because that way, it, otherwise, it does. It becomes an egocentric uh, biblical reading. Mm-hmm. And and it's always. And if you don't, if you start reading, and oh, it's not for me. Yeah. Personally, for what I'm going through now, then oh. it starts becoming empty, and then we end up actually giving up on reading wow, the word, and then man. we just. We want to start listening to more and more messages and more and more other teaching because those are all, not all, but they can become, uh, uh, because they're trying to teach people what's God saying about them, Mm -hmm. uh, that we start searching again for what's he saying to me instead of what's he saying. Wow. You know, that's convicting. And, uh, so that's so good. That, that's what I mean about reading the Bible. Okay. You know, but some one a great book that I loved, uh, Sky Jatani. I think that's how you pronounce his name. I'm to write that. It's J- called With. Write that down. Sky <laughs> Jatani. I think it's Sky it's called J- With. With. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that I really enjoyed that book because okay. uh, it's it's doing life with God instead mm. of doing life for Him or from Him or different ways of trying to prove something to God is your abiding, which okay. that in of itself is a major it's thing, so, but just so abiding good. in God, wow. you know, which is hard so, these yeah. days. So I really enjoyed that book. I would, I, I recommend that book okay. Okay. quite often. We'll to add people. that to the show notes yeah. if I can spell the name right. <laughs> yeah. You, you need to look it up. <laughs> but, awesome. uh, I, I think it. that's how you pronounce, okay. pronounce his name, but, cool. uh, but it's called with okay. doing life with God or something so like that. Good. But, uh, but yeah, I, I would still go back to read the Bible for what it says, what's God saying. And that's it. Don't don't awesome. don't put the for me okay. or to me at the end. Yeah. What's God saying? God's always speaking. So it's good. us that that have a tendency to only want to filter out what's he saying to me. Mm-hmm. Me, me, me. Maybe yeah. he's saying something 
in general that he wants you to be a part of Whoa. and he's just screaming it out and <laughs> here we are that's what about me about today. that's so good <laughs> you know? Pastor Ajay. So, yeah. wow. that's what i would say okay <laughs> i'm very convicted <laughs> i love that how can we follow you are you on social I, you're not I, really i know i haven't done much social stuff uh, but we do uh, carol and i do have a facebook page together okay. she posts a lot more than i do okay, cool. i think it's carol williams mz MZ. Yes. Mosey. So for Got Mosey, it. Yeah. Okay, she cool. posts a lot more than I do and, and okay. uh, things like we that. But I, I haven't with... been on social media and all. But the church there in Mozambique, they have uh, social media. Cool. And, uh, and stuff like that. Great but, stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. So. Well, thank you so mm-hmm. much. This was so inspiring, encouraging. Thank, thank you all so much for mm-hmm. listening in. We will catch you next time on Friend to Friend. Thanks so much for watching today's episode. We hope you loved it. If anything stuck out to you, drop a comment and let us know. We'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all the fun things. And if you're looking for us on social media, you can find us at Children's Cup.